Hello guys and welcome back to today's lecture. Oh no, sorry. Today's video. Okay, I think I need to start again. Hello guys and welcome back to Dark Horse FM. In today's video, well, it's slightly more of a lecture anyway, but in today's video, I'm going to share with you, or we're going together, we're going to try and understand how fullbacks work. And in today's video, by the end of today's video, hopefully, we're going to have a proper understanding about how you can use your fullbacks and how you can select the right fullback roles to match your current scenario or also to match the philosophy you're trying to create so we're going to go through all the fullback roles in football manager 2022 as of date and then we'll look at how each player role operates and how you can use them in certain scenarios to actually help your team get a better result in the game also to have a great season also we're going to try and cover um, each fullback and depending on the player attributes as well to know the did the specific roles actually include for a player when you're selecting roles for fullbacks so basically this for this video is a guide towards using fullbacks and how you can understand them and how they play out in football manager 2022 so if you're new to the channel guys remember to hit the subscribe button to get notifications whenever new videos pop up and also to leave a like button if you find this video actually quite useful so on dark horse fm we normally go through football manager tips and also football manager retro tactics and football manager tactical recreations for teams that are not in the top league so basically teams that are hidden gems in football manager as you can see i'm currently at krasnoda right now and well i'm actually going to enjoy this save but regardless i tend to follow teams that are not really really popular so that's how i enjoy playing football manager remember to leave a like in the to leave to subscribe to the channel if you're interested in teams that are not so popular as well if you also like using lower league teams or teams that are not the elite version of teams or teams that are not very familiar to everyone you can hit the subscribe button to keep in touch with me and also to leave a comment leave a comment down below so let me know the favorite hidden teams that might be out there that i don't really know about just yet and we'll get through to the video so like i mentioned in today's video we're going to be looking at a tactical guide in respect to fullbacks we're going to be looking at fullbacks so in the modern game we know that fullbacks have evolved recently much like any other role and then they've kind of transitioned from being those very defensive players and being involved in the defensive side of the team to be a bit more adventurous and they also play a key role in the team's attacking setup so that's the way fullbacks have evolved to become these days now football manager kind of covers a lot of it football manager has a way to cover almost all the roles that actually play out in football and recently we might see new changes to roles as well so we just need to wait and see if if uh, football manager 2023 to see how those roles are might actually which new rules might actually be added to the game but right now i know football manager covers a lot of roles so in today's video i'm going to take you through all the roles in football manager and how they work and after going through all the roles one after the other we will also look at the possible fullback pairings that can actually work and how they work together the kind of fullbacks you can use on the left and on the right and what, what if a particular fullback is on the left is playing a particular kind of role what the other fullback on the right hand side should be doing to help so you have to help your defense so that your tactic isn't all over the place kind of so that's what we're going to be looking through today and also hopefully we're going to try and you know find fullbacks that actually complement each other in any way and by the way if you are for there's a document i've been using there's a resource i've been using since football manager 2015 it's called the role and descriptions pdf it's a it's a pdf that was written by lama in regards to guides towards tactics and it's a very very useful it's a very very useful pdf that i found is a very useful book that i've been using for football manager even to fm22 i still make reference to that book to check which roles complement each other and which roles would be or would naturally not go well together so the rules that i learned from that book has really helped me create good tactics in recent years even up until 2022 show i'm going to attach a link in the description so you can download the book if you want it as well and much credit to lama for creating this product i know most guys that play football manager most people that play football manager anyway will probably know about this book but if you don't i'll leave a description i'll leave a link in the description for you to check it out and know how and see how the book is so first of all we're going to go we're going through all the roles we by football manager from what i've counted so far there are 11 possible roles you can use in football manager 2022 and those 11 different roles i split them into a certain kind of um duty so as you can see here they're just five but in a way they're 11 and i'm going to explain why you've got the fullback on attack duty and the fullback on defend duty and the fullback on support duty i did not count the automatic role because the automatic is slightly similar to the fullback on support duty 
The wing back also has rules on support, attack, and defend, and automatic. There's then the no nonsense fullback, no nonsense. What used to be the limited defender before is not no nonsense fullback. He has been, he has also been retained in this football manager version as well. So the complete wing back is also here with support and attack duty, and then the inverted wing back, the most advanced version of the fullback anyway, is the. The, the inverted fullback has rules, defense support and attack duty and automatic duty as well. And also automatic duty is slightly similar to support because the player will be switching between roles. The first fullback we're going to be looking towards is the no-nonsense fullback. Basically, this guy is almost like a center half in the wing position. So is the idea behind the no-nonsense fullback is that this player just focuses on defending and then doesn't really try to get forward and support the attacks in any way. So the only duty the no-nonsense fullback is available for is the defend duty. He cannot support or attack or support. He can't do any other thing besides defend. So basically, you can use this fullback if you just want to hold the lead or if you're in a lower league team and then you really, really want to defend and then you have no... You have no plans for going forward in any single way you can use the no-nonsense fullback the next one we're going to be looking at is the fullback on defend duty now there's a trick between the fullback on defend and then the no-nonsense fullback on defend they almost play the same way but the fullback on defend is slightly more adventurous than the no-nonsense fullback i don't know if that makes much sense so as much as the no-nonsense fullback plays like a center back in the wing position the fullback on defend will also operate in the same manner but he will slide he will step slightly forward and then try to try to like play with simple passes to midfielders and whatnot the no-nonsense fullback would clear the ball out of the defense immediately but the fullback on the front will look for ways to play simple passes to players that are ahead of him and try to be a bit more creative in no that isn't right he's not creative at all but let's be realistic the no-nonsense fullback is slightly more the fullback on defend duty is slightly more adventurous primary is going to be a defensive player so this player is going to try to play simple passes to midfielders in any way so he can actually try and get the ball out of the defense but he's also going to defend the wide areas and the no-nonsense fullback will not even try to play simple passes he will just hoof the ball along to wherever it's safe on support duty, the fullback is going to be a bit more adventurous now and it's going to be a bit more creative as well. To me, this is one of the most um, versatile roles you can use in Football Manager 2022 because you, know, you can actually ask the, the fullback on support duty to do almost anything you want. So it's, if you notice the instructions um, attached to the fullback on support duty, there, it's completely blank. So you can ask him to cut inside and be like an inverted fullback or you can ask him to run out wide and be like a wing back or complete wing back. So that's kind of how the fullback on support is and you can ask him to be a playmaker as well ask him to take more risks or play short passes and you can do you can ask him to do the lot basically so this is the fullback that you can use to recreate roles like complete if you wanted to play like a complete wing back right now it's just to attach the attack duty ask him to dribble more get further forward that's already included and then ask him to cross on byline ask him to probably get into the box as well and try and score goals and finish off chances so it's the fullback on support duty is actually quite quite an interesting role because you can ask this player to do almost anything on attack duty like i mentioned before the fullback is going to be a lot more adventurous now now it's going to be your width this player is going to obviously overlap the wide player ahead of him and try to get crosses into the box i think you can use the fullback on attack duty with no wide player so if i move this player in here and then i added this winger to be an attack if you use the fullback on attack duty now mind you this is something i learned from lama's documents from lama's book the role and descriptions from football manager 2020 from football manager 5, fm15 so if i use a fullback here on attack duty if i use him on support duty as well he might be able to offer some width but on attack duty is going to be the best because he's going to get all the way forward and offer some and just cover this role you're not going to be left isolated on the flanks he's the fullback on attack duty is going to be the one to offer your width so that's this actually works using a fullback on attack that's if you do not want to use a wing back and automatic that is going to get forward naturally you can use the fullback on attack duty and he covers this role just well so that's what the fullback on attack duty will do he will get crosses from the byline and try to offer width to the team for wing backs this is where it gets tricky because you can have a wing back play on defend but then that begs the question if the wing back is on defend how will he get forward and be a wing back so i've thank god i actually switched this role to a diamond so you can actually make more sense while i'm using the wing back here the wing back playing on defend duty will get forward occasionally but he will cross the ball from deeper areas although he's still going to operate like a wing back 
he's also going to primarily focus on trying to close down the opposition and defend so as you can see his instruction he says cross from deep there is a problem using the wingback on defend duty in this tactic you might need to have an additional player like a carrilero to probably offer some support on this wide area or you can use a metalla so if you have a metalla on this road knowing that the metalla would not defend that much you can have a wingback on defense to just cover this duty as well while the wing back on defending team will basically look to play in the deeper role and try to offer some crosses when he can, the wing back on support DT is going to operate a bit more differently. What I've realized from Football Manager 2022, and I wish I knew this a lot earlier, is wing back on support DT is obviously going to behave like a playmaker in the wing back position. So if you look at the wing back duty on support, when the player is set to support DT, the wing back is obviously looking to aim to play angle three balls from wide areas into normal strikers to try and run into to run in from deep areas so this player is going to obviously operate a lot like Trent Alexander Arnold does for Liverpool he will whip in those crosses when there's space to do that and then but most of the time he's going to obviously try to play through balls into for strikers to score the instruction isn't included here it is something that is embedded in the role and that's another thing I probably realized in the football manager like the, the, the earlier video that we did from the segment of Volante you can see that there's some instructions and behaviors that the segment of Volante has that is not included in the player instructions so the wing backs instruction as well the play more direct pass them um, more direct passing and take more risks those instructions are automatically turned on for the wing back on support duty even though it's not included in his player instructions as we can see on attack duty this is probably one of my favorite roles in football manager 2022 as well the wing back on attack duty this player is going to obviously get a lot for a lot more forward into advanced position and try to, and try and cross the ball from the player as well you can see that the instruction has been included as for the wing back on attack duty he's going to cross the ball from wide areas and obviously cover this entire wing and when there's a player ahead of him so i think i need to pull this guy back now so if you even if you have a player ahead of this ahead of the wing back here and then he's said to be like an inverter winger of sorts the this player cutting inside was going to give the wing the wing back room to run ahead of him and then overlap and try and play in those crosses from the byline position so he's going to operate slightly more like a fullback on attack but a bit more adventurous than a regular fullback on attack because the wing back on attack duty as it includes in this description here this player will supplement his attacking duties and will supplement his defending duties sorry oh i almost made a huge mistake there the wing back on attack duty will supplement his defensive duties for more attacking duties and try and cross those balls into the box as opposed to the fullback on attack duty the fullback on attack even though he is playing those crosses into the box he will obviously still get back and try and close down and um, do his defensive work basically so i feel i'm halfway into the video now this is probably a good time to take a break and look at something else um probably think of something else i'm trying to remember, recall the last time i lost a heavy defeated football manager it was almost like nine goals to nil um at some point i was supposed to close the match but i didn't i just kept on seeing how bad the air was going to score me and how how far they were willing to take how far they were willing to keep scoring and how bad the ai can be when they want to be ruthless or if it's possible for the ai to you know score and then stop scoring and try and control the game but they did it they kept on scoring until it was like nine goals to now and then that's how it happened so back to what we were talking about the more adventurous roles are coming up now the complete win back is the best one i'm going to swap to so looking at the complete win back this role has been also one of my favorite roles in football manager as well in the sense that he operates a lot like the a lot like the fullback on attack or the wingback on attack but in this sense i've noticed the complete wing back the difference between the complete wing back and the other two roles i just mentioned is how super adventurous the complete wing back is going to be the complete wing back even though he gets all the way up here he tends to get into the box as well from what i've learned from playing football manager 2022 and using complete wing backs even in fm20 and fm21 the complete wing backs tend to behave the same they tend to get high up in the field and then into the box as well so if there's this if there's a white player again i'm going to use okay let me come to the right hand side now let's move this player to the right and then you have an inverted winger on inside forward of sense and then this row get back here thank you no thank you if you have an, an inside forward here and then he gets he gets into the box as well or he shifts inside to try and you know drag the fullback in, inside with him and then cause confusion between the fullback and the center half if this player is here imaginably and then he's in this position the complete wing back on the other hand the complete wing back will get all the way up 
and then into the space vacated by the striker the f and also vacated by the inside forward as well so there will be two players here that's how the complimenting back normally operates and when he's on attack you see it's even worse he'll probably even tend to score some goals when he's one-on-one -on -one. you see your fullback you will see your complete win back in one-on-one -on -one situations very often the complete win back is available on support and attack duty so when he's on support he's going to try and defend a little bit but he's still going to get a lot he's going to get forward a lot but when he is on attack duty there is no business with this guy defending he is not going to defend on he's going to up, he's probably even worse than a metal on attack he will not defend whatsoever he's going to be all the way up here trying to cause havoc for the opposition the next one i'm going to go into is the inverted wing back on well all the inverted wing back roles anyway so i've i noticed i haven't spoken about the automatic role the automatic role in case i have mentioned it before i'm going to say it again when a player is on automatic duty it means they're going to swap between automatic support they're going to swap between support defend and attack duty depending on the match case scenario now it doesn't happen fully I'm trying to recall how that happens automatically because if you look at the automatic then it's linked to support so the player is going to be by default on support and then switch between defend and attack you can see that the mentality is balanced but if I switch the team mentality to let's just crash let's just try something freaky if I switch the team mentality to defensive and then check the inverted wing backs duty he is now on defend duty so that when you switch the mentality of the team his automatic duty also changes so he that the, basically the automatic operates with how the with how the team mentality is set up so that's probably something i learned today as well <laughs> so I'll, at first i thought it was if the player is on automatic duty in the middle of the match he would just be switching with whatever comes to him so i just realized that if i change the team mentality it's also going to change the way the inverted wing back operates or any player that is on automatic basically even if it's the fullback or the central midfielder or the wing back if you place any player on automatic as the team mentality changes he is his own instruction will also change from whatever it was like you know in inverted wing back since we're using an attacking mentality his duty has been swapped to attack so i don't forget why i actually came here the inverted wing back on attack duty let me just take it back to support inverted wing back on support duty will obviously drift into this thing with the inverted wing back is the inverted wing back operates much like the much like the in the inverted wingers and inside forwards would operate but he's doing this from a much deeper position so the inverted wing back like inverted wingers do would cut inside in this region and then tend to stay in the de defensive midfield and central midfield position to try and be a playmaker of sorts and also offer some from midfield superior some midfield numerical superiority yes i got it right this time that's how the wing back is going to operate so just to cross check and just to confirm with support duty the wing back is obviously going to drift into the central midfield position and try to play you know to play as a supporting role in the defensive system so it's going to be like a playmaker in the dm position and the central midfield position if you use the inverted wing back on attack which i've noticed before he is going to be all the way up in here he's going to be in the central attacking midfield position but then if you use him on defend duty He's going to be in this position as well and also on the right now you'll be probably wondering so what is he doing when the team like why is he not in his position all the time or why is he starting from the wide area the trick is this movement usually only happens when the team is in possession of the ball if the team is out of possession the inverted wing back will operate much like a natural wing back would operate he's going to close down the wide areas and tend to stay in this position and then when the team is in possession he will then start cutting inside be a playmaker you would notice this behavior with Joshua Kimmich in Bayern that's before I think that's when Pep Guardiola took over at Bayern right yeah so when Kimmich I noticed this behavior with Kimmich a lot because I know Joshua Kimmich to be a defensive midfielder but then I always saw him on the right when at some point I know Philip Lamb retired I noticed Kimmich was now playing at right back but then I knew Kimmich to be a defensive midfielder so it looked kind of confusing and then I realized that he was playing an inverted wing back role which he's going to be in here when the team is in possession and also be out here when the team is out of possession you also see this behavior with Jao Cancelo of Manchester City he scored one amazing goal against Newcastle where he got inside all the way and then took the ball went on a run played some one two passes and then he took a long range effort from here and scored straight up i was so impressed and that was the first time i actually and let me not say the first time because i know i saw it with kimmich but this was like the adventurous effect or the full the inverted wing backs role seen to full effect by pep Guardiola the last manchester city it was jao Cancelo that executed that that full length of play 
So I think I've covered every rule um, pertaining to fallbacks and now we are in the tougher part of the video which is probably how to play a fullback so which is going to be really interesting to see how that kind of pans out but before we go into how you play a fullback so I'm going to try and cover the ideal players that you can actually see in some roles so when you have a an inverted wingback like I already mentioned the this the this the player that actually operates like this as Jao can say Joshua Kimmich you can find any player that is a left-footed player playing on the right hand side as a fullback is an ideal player for inverted wing backs if you're going to look for a complete wing back i would say back in the day marcelo was one of the best complete wing backs that were out there and then i've already mentioned for inverted wing backs as well but if you want to talk about a wing back on attack duty a player like reese james is one that you can say operates like a wing back on attack ben chilwell as well these two players are in chelsea by the way reese james and ben chilwell are players that operate like in wing, like wing backs on attack duty like I already mentioned for the wing back on support, Trent Alexander Arnold is one of the key players I've seen execute the wing back on support duty well because he operates much like a playmaker in the wide area for Liverpool. And then what other role am I missing? The wing back on defend. Yeah, this one is tricky because the one player I know I can say have seen execute the wing back on defend duty well is Aspeliqueta at Chelsea also, which is strange because I think I need to think of I need to widen my audience, kind of to widen my horizon to scout more players. So, but as Pelicueta plays as a wing back on the fence really, really well. And players that operate like wing backs on the fence, yeah, that comes to mind. Sheffield United centre halves, the their team that I saw execute the wide centre back roles really well. I mentioned that because I noticed that players that can play as wide centre backs are players that are very good at playing as wing back on the fence duty. Again, that is that player, it's um, says Aspiliqueza as well. He's one player that can play as a wide centre back and also as a wing back on the fence duty. Fullback on attack is a bit easier to find. You can basically any player that can play as a wing back should be able to execute a fullback on attack role because all you need is your player's crossing attributes and pace as well, stamina to get up and down the field all the time. So fullbacks that can players that can play as full, as wing backs should be able to play as wing backs on as fullbacks on attack duty. And you probably need fullbacks on attack duty if you're playing in the lower leagues and then you do not have those players that can play as wing backs if you're going really really far down the league and then you have players that have specific in specific attributes and are lacking in other areas you can set those rules players that are ideal for complete for fullback on attack duty player um fella mendy at real madrid is actually a very good fullback on attack because he can get forward a lot and also close down the defensive areas really really well now we're trying to look at the ideal pairings for football manager fullbacks probably i should set another video for that but it seems, it seems like since i'm already here my mind is already at it i think i'm going to go through with it anyway so if you have a fullback on attack duty and a full and a wing back on defend duty this ideally means that this guy is closing this space up onto this region he's not advent he's not venturing too far forward and then he's also just staying in his defensive position and trying to close down the opposition attacks but these his partner, his fullback partner on the left hand side, he's the more adventurous fullback. So this balance, there's a balance between these two roles and then they kind of complement each other really well. So the, for, this guy is defending and closing this region and then this, oh my god. Okay, this guy is defending and closing this region and then the other player is being more adventurous on this other side. You might ask if it's possible to have two players just defend, you just be on defend duty. Well, that works, but it just means that your players are not offering too much in attack. So you're just going to be focused on defending. And it's ideal to use this setup if your team has no business going forward. If you plan no way to attack anymore, you just want to close the game down and just win it and play. And very defensive yes you can set your players to be on all defend but i don't recommend this for a for a full length of season because at some point the opposition is going to figure it out and then be like these guys are not actually pressing us in any way and then they'll get tired and just they'll figure it out and then they'll find a way to start scoring new goals because your players are not causing them problems in their own half so back to the fullbacks on support duty it's possible to have two fullbacks on support duty or one fullback on support and the other on attack duty but you always want to try and complement the fullbacks and what i try to do is not have two fullbacks play the ideal or to not have different both fullbacks do the same thing so if one player is probably offering going on at, on if my fullback here on support is offering some support to the midfield and then getting forward as well the other fullback might be doing something slightly different he may be the one cutting inside 
and helping out the midfield from central positions. And you can use a wing back on support duty as well and a wing back on attack duty. Just swapping this really quick. You can use a wing back on attack duty as well. But in sense, from you have to also get a sense of what each player is doing. So by what we've just gone through now and how each player works, you can try and create an understanding between what each player is doing and then what the other guy is doing. So not that it's really wrong to have both players do the same thing, but you also need to balance to have a balancing act between the how that between how that works. Now let's look at the fullback on attack duty and the and the second fullback also playing on attack duty. The problem here is both players are going to get forward even though they will come back on occasion. They are both going forward. So as they are going forward, we're going to have just two centre halves and they won't go keep out. Basically, we're outnumbered in the central in the central defensive positions. So the ideal way to execute this would be to have a central defensive midfielder cover and help out the defense. So you can have a defensive midfielder on defend or a deep line playmaker on defend. You can just have one play, extra player to defend and then allow that, that allows these two players, the four backs, the two four backs to get forward as often as they want, knowing that one person is covering up for them here. The same rule goes for inverted wing backs as well. Now, since I have put inverted wing backs on automatic duty, ideally on support duty, I know for a fact that these players are cutting in into this region and then they are operating in this region here. So that means I can have just the one player, I can have just the one player in this row and then have more players in wide areas, knowing that my inverted wing backs, I don't know if you've ever seen a tactic like this before. Have you? Have you ever seen a tactic shape like this before? I can't move my central attacking midfield. Okay, there it is. I don't know. You've probably seen a tactic shape like this before, but that's the idea with the inverted wing backs. They will defend the wide areas, but then they will come into the central midfield and help out the central midfielder that it's quite lonely in this region here. So that's the way inverted wing backs will work. And ideally, you can set this player to play on support duty, and I'll explain why. Because if you're playing your inverted wing back on attack duty, he means they're going to overlap the central midfielder and then they're going to get all the way forward into the AM role. And going into the AM role, we already have a player here. So that makes that makes little sense why you're going to neglect the central midfielder that is alone and then have another inverted wing back on attack duty operating in this position. So that's kind of like doesn't really make much sense. But if by all means, if you're trying to overload your position and trying to win the game. And trying to dominate the game and score more goals the beans are going to want extra players in attacking position so by all means use the inverted wing back on attack but if you don't and you're trying to gain control over the game from the center of midfield because basically that is where the game is won you're going to want to set these guys to support or automatic duty because automatic is somewhat support duty that's where the, the inverted wing backs are set up so i think that's as much as i can share right now because i'm um, I think the video is actually getting too long but by the way i could obviously thank you guys for actually staying this long with the video and i'm also going to go back with another video to do a different position where we're going to look at the rules of that position and try to see how they relate with each other and don't forget if you need more instructions of how or if you need a better understanding of how rules play and how rules and formations and player positions actually work together with each other don't forget to download Lamas, rules and descriptions from the link below. I'm going to attach the link below so you can download it for yourself and then go through the book and see how it works and see how to pair players in Football Manager 2022 as well. Thanks you guys for watching. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you found this useful. Also hit the like button as well. It helps the video get recommended of sorts. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.